What it do, Dream Team? Welcome back to the channel. Here we are with another episode of the incredible show that is Red Dwarf. We got season six, episode five, Rimmer World. Before we dive in, if you happen to enjoy, please don't forget to subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and let's do this. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have had to allow for the fact that you cheated at your eye tests. What do you mean, cheated? There's no point in lying, sir. You crept in here last night knowing you were going to have a medical, and you copied the eye charts onto your shoes. I admit I might have taken a peek, but I'm a competitive man, Crichton. Always have been. That's what makes me what I am. You're all perfectly well aware of what you are, sir. <laughs> oh, the results. <laughs> Everything tickety-boo? Like to uh, take a seat for a moment, sir. Problem. You don't have any next of kin, do you, sir? <laughs> uh oh. Uh -oh. Died of heart attacks. Well, not just heart attacks. Aneurysms, strokes, brain clots, you name it. Oh. Are you of the school that went faced with bad news prefers to hear that news naked and unvarnished? Or are you of the ilk that prefers to live in happy and blissful ignorance of the nightmare you're facing? <laughs> ignorance every time. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. You've come storming through your medical with flying colors. <laughs> See you next time. Everything is okay, then. Absolutely peachy. I want to know, Crichton, if there's something wrong. If there were something wrong, sir, I would tell you. Even if I'd asked you not to. Well, no. In that case, I would... <laughs> I would tell you everything was absolutely peachy. Crichton, I want to know. That's why I asked for a medical in the first place. Is there bad news? Live mode cancel. Yes, sir. I'm afraid there is. I knew it. It's the headaches, isn't it? And the heart palpitations, and the blackouts, and the chest pains, and the voices. There's something to do with that, isn't it? Sir, when you died, you were recreated as a hologram, and your exact personality was refined to an algorithm and duplicated electronically. If that algorithm contained a flaw, that flaw would be duplicated also. Uh oh. It's not common, but it's possible for a hologram to die. Right, and kind what? of to the point before I jam your nose between your cheeks and make it the filling of a buttock sandwich. <laughs> As a result of both genetics and environment, you are particularly prone to stress-related nervous disorders. And your activities mm. over the past couple of years have pushed your brain to, well, frankly, beyond breaking point. Oh. <laughs> your T-count, which is the hologrammatic equivalent of blood pressure, is higher than a hippie on the third day of an open-air festival. Oh. That's high. To avoid a gigantic electronic aneurysm, it is imperative that you start on a program of relaxation. I see, and you thought the best way for me to start this program of relaxation was to tell me my brains were about to explode. <laughs> You've got the bedside manner of an abattoir giblet gutter. Oh my god. Here's what I suggest. Try and avoid all stressful situations. Spend more time in your hard light form and take a little exercise. And here. Use these Chinese worry balls whenever you feel anxious or tense. <laughs> hey, maybe some good news. Come and check it out. Uh, I don't want the others to know about this. I want you to behave as if everything's absolutely normal. As you wish, sir. There she blows. Logging onto the attic computer. What's this? We've come across that simulant ship we told a couple of weeks back. We're going to try and board it for supplies. Is that wise, sir? The scan says the superstructure is highly unstable and could go at any time. What are some of the simulants have survived? There's an old cat saying, if you're going to eat tuna, expect bones. There's an old human saying, if you're going to talk garbage, expect pain. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take our chances, man, okay? No, K. They're cybernetically deranged mechanical killing machines. Not content with blasting their ship out of the sky, you now want to go back and steal what remains of their belongings? That's the metaphorical equivalent of flopping your wedding tackle into a lion's mouth and flicking his love spuds with a wet towel. Oh! Total insanity. Yeah, I never heard it put like that, but that would be totally insane, River. I got to agree with you. Ever since that refrigeration unit packed in, we've had to live off a few pathetic handfuls of moss and fungi scraped off passing asteroids. I can't stand it anymore. Sir, are you really saying you'd rather have a psychopathic mechanical killer rip off your skull and play your frontal lobe like a xylophone than, than have another bowl of my nourishing space nettle soup? 
<laughs> Buddy, I'd hand him the sticks and hold up the sheet music. <laughs> Listen, they are simulants. Why on IO should they have food supplies? Because the IDENT computer says they do. Look. Stock to the gills. It's true, sir. Rogue simulants always carry large stocks of food supplies in order to prolong the torment of their torture victims. In some cases, they've kept oh. subjects alive for over 40 years in a state of perpetual agony. Oh. If we wanted to live in a state of perpetual agony, we'd let Lister play his guitar. <laughs> we don't. I say drive on. Crying, what's for dinner? Uh, tonight, sir, asteroidal lichen stew followed by dandelion sorbet. We're going uh, in. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Sir, can't you see your behavior is totally irrational? In which case we can remove him from duty as per Space Corps Directive 196156. 196156. Any officer caught sniffing the saddle of the exercise bicycle in the women's gym <laughs> will be discharged without trial. Hmm. Sorry, sir, that doesn't quite get to the nub of the matter for me. <laughs> sir, we have enough thistles and weeds and cultured fungus for you to scrum yourself stupid until the day you die. This foolhardy trip beggars logic. Lister would be fools not to listen to him. When is he ever wrong? All right, he may have a head shaped like an inexplicably popular fishing float. <laughs> but he does operate from a position of total logic and would be fools to ignore his sage counsel. At least let me and Mr. Rimmer go in your place. We are, after all, merely electronic life forms and therefore expendable. And what the smeg would you know, Bob Bob for hell? <laughs> Something else. Didn't want to say in front of the cat. <laughs> the reserve fuel tank got punctured when we crash into the ocean moon. If we don't resupply, we're out of power two, three days. But what about the readouts? I rigged the readouts. Didn't want to cause any alarm. You rigged the readouts. You didn't want to cause any other. Ah, <laughs> oh, day. I can't breathe. I'm hyperventilating. Please, sir, don't panic. Uh, it's not panic. It's a full-blown hysterical fit. <laughs> Grind those balls, sir. Grind them. <laughs> so let me get this straight. If we board that ship and get captured, we're finished. However, if we board that ship, don't get captured, but the superstructure disintegrates around us, we're finished. On the other hand, if we board that ship, don't get captured, and the superstructure doesn't disintegrate around us, but we can't find any fuel, we are in fact finished. Yes. So that's shape, yeah. After you with the ball, sir. <laughs> we're out of options. We've got less choice than a Welsh fish and chip shop. <laughs> Should we keep anything is on the brink of this integration? Let's just play the crew are rotting in silicon hell along with all the photocopiers. Look, you three go. I'm not leaving Starbuck. Fine, that's fair enough. Unless, of course, something weird and hideously ironic happens. Like, while we're away, you get boarded by a rampaging torture party of crazed simulants in the rabid grip of bloodlust fever. I'll go and pack. <laughs> Bring your extra brown rubber safety pants. <laughs> oh, my like God. Mug belt. We need all the hands we can muster. Suckers bumps into me, he'll be lunching on later. Last time we met, I was wearing the same outfit, and no one's gonna survive to tell that story. <laughs> Suppose now as good a time as any to tell you. Tell us what? We can't actually use the bazookoids for psychological reasons only. Look, the scan said that the superstructure is so unstable, even a loud noise can start to shit quake. That's why I skip chilies for breakfast. <laughs> oh my god. Like what? Like I'm a nostril hair in a Spanish only. <laughs> Why didn't you tell us? I didn't want to cause any panic. You didn't want to cause any <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this clear in my head. If we meet one of these totally deranged killing machines, we have to engage them in combat silently. What do we do? Whisper, charge, tippy to up to them all screaming, shh, and chloroform them with Lister's armpits? <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Oh, oh my god. Longer, sir. We better make this the last batch. One more trip, right? Let me get one more crate of that red hot western you grab pepper sauce. Oh my god. Shh. Shh. Oh my god.
the pus sucking puke laden walking cesspits of unspeakableness. Oh. She remembers us. <laughs> Annihilated my ship, slaughtered my fellow symbiotes, and you practically destroyed me. Yes, I remember you. There's one thing we should know. Last time we met, I was wearing a cute little black number with peach trim and gold spangles. And although it looks like I'm wearing the same outfit today, it is in fact an entirely different cute little black number with completely different gold spangles. I suggest that from this moment on, the rest of this discourse is conducted by those with brains larger than a grape. <laughs> okay, let's knock on the door and ask for Ronnie Reel. This is a classic stalemate situation. You can't use your weapons and neither can we. Just chalk this one down to experience and we'll be on our merry way, yeah? Actually, as far as psychotic, deranged, ruthless killer simulants go, you're a bit of a babe. <laughs> what are you doing tonight? Dying. Oh my god. Care to join me? Hey, come on, let's just talk, okay? We didn't start any of this, and I think that maybe now it is a good time to sit down and party. Let's not hang around, just get on with it. There is nothing for us to discuss. <laughs> oh my god. You can't be serious. I am totally serious. I don't believe you're being serious. I do not understand why you're having such problems grasping this concept. I'm a totally ruthless, amoral killing machine. So in the name of all that's putrid, don't you believe I'm serious? I'm going to say this one more time, because you've got a chance to change your mind. Think about it. Everything we've been through. Does none of that mean anything to you? Oh my god. She is really started a shit quake. The superstructure's disintegrating. I must warn you, sir, the teleport is not calibrated for human tissue. There's a 20% chance you'll be turned inside out when you materialize. Hey, let me check my lining. Hey, there's some lavender. I can carry that off. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Don't you remember, sir? This is a week last Thursday. In the panic, I must have made a programming error. Goodness sake, cried. Don't you know how rude it is to burst in on an earlier version of yourself without warning? Oh, my. I'm totally surreal now. I'm very cross. Pardon my paradox. It's just that the simulant ship you're about to encounter. We don't want to know what we're about to encounter. Don't compound your temporal faux pas by telling us our future. Where's the rangy handsome one? <laughs> you scar, but not a skateboard, you slimy, triple face backstabbing Judas. Ah, I'm safe then. Thank you. <laughs> don't talk to them. You see what you've done now? Just get back to your own damn timeline. Here we go then. Well. Be you later. <laughs> well, be you later. Oh, my God. All in all, a hundred percent successful trip. Sir, we lost Mr. Rumor. All in all, a hundred percent successful trip. Uh, right, I'm with the cat. Hey, hey, he did them dirty. He did them absolutely dirty. He got to go. I don't know where he went, but he better stay there. I can't believe he did that. Not even Rimmer. Sir, I didn't get the opportunity to tell you before, but earlier today I discovered Mr. Rimmer is suffering from a stress-related nervous disorder. Next time I see him, he'll be suffering from a fish-related teeth disorder. <laughs> My escape plan worked then. What escape plan? The valiant plan whereby I set off the disintegration of the ship's hull by bravely leaping into the escape pod, thereby creating a diversion so you could... Actually, how did you escape? <laughs> a teleport. That wasn't the only way, but as good as any, I suppose. Still, I'm sure no one's forgetting the sheer manliness and stiff upper lipidness of the diversionary part of the plan, and to hasten with all speed the recovery of the modest hero of the hour. Actually, Flash, that might be a bit of a problem. What do you mean? You're accelerating away from us way above our top speed. I've logged into your IDEN computer, sir. Rogue simulants looted the pod from a colonization seating ship constructed in the 25th century. There are no controls as such. It is programmed to take you to the nearest planet with an S3 atmosphere. Oh, How long Lord. is it going to take to get me back? Uh, well, let's see, shall we? Uh, checking out the local area. Uh, no, nothing there. Uh, going to mid-range. Uh, 
Uh, still nothing. <laughs> Going to long range. Long, long range. Long, long, long range. <laughs> ah, there we have it. Just computing. Well, how long? You still got those Chinese worry balls, sir. Yes. Well, start grinding them like you've never ground before. How long? Let me tell him, Crichton. How long? A year and a half. <laughs> That's ridiculous. You've got to find a way of getting me back. We could try and bring you down with a round from the laser cannon, sir. Form an orderly cube behind the gun side. <laughs> Another way. Sir, there are no other options. Wait, something's happening. Course change. Check. Your guidance system has found a nearer S3 planet. It's taking you through that wormhole at 495372. That's a lot better. You should make planet fall in four days. Isn't there some sort of time dilation problem when you go through a wormhole? Well, yes, there is. Since you're traveling through compressed space, time will move more swiftly for the object passing through the wormhole. One minute on this side of the wormhole will represent many years on the other. So, oh. is that good? Balls on standby, sir. <laughs> More than a year and a half? Uh, yes, sir, a little more. How much more? Well, let's not beat around the bush. A lot more. <laughs> right, that's still beating about the bush. Just tell me. Well, remember that medieval war, sir, that lasted quite a long time? The Thirty Years' War? No, not that war, sir. The other one. <laughs> the Hundred Years' War? Now, take that figure and multiply it by six, and then you'll come up with your, your golden number, sir. Six hundred years? That's crazy. <laughs> six hundred years is crazy crazy for him to be alone but you brought this upon yourself Rimmer we're losing contact any minute in 600 years with just myself as company I'll go raving mad there's an old cat saying but you don't want to hear it right now <laughs> on the upside according to your inventory the pod stock with solar accelerators that should keep your hard light drive going for as long as you need but as the pod was looted from a seeding ship there may even be emergency terraforming equipment on board Possibly even at a genetic capability. But I'll never survive. I'm not the Robinson Crusoe type. I'm lousy at woodwork. I'm no good in the wild. Do you know, when I was at school, it took me five terms to make a tent peg. <laughs> How long is it going to take me to build a two-story home with running water and a balcony stroke sun patio? <laughs> in 600 years, I won't even have finished planing the wood. Losing contact any second. See you in eight lifetimes. One last word, sir. Remember your condition. Whatever happens, try and avoid stressful situations. Whatever befalls you, try and greet it with a smile on your lips and a song in your heart. <laughs> you are a total, total, complete, utter, total. God, day. Well, he's gone. So what do we do now? Nothing we can do. I know for a fact there's no champagne. <laughs> <laughs> This time dilation phenomenon will appear as if Mr. Rimmer is gone for just a few hours. But from Mr. Rimmer's point of view, he will have to wait six entire centuries for us to reach him. To hell with the champagne. We can celebrate with you, all right, and recite. <laughs> oh my god. This is the personal log of Space Corps Hard Light Hologram Arnold J. Rimmer. Day one. After landing, I ventured forth to explore the place I would be calling home for the next two-thirds of a millennium. A desert planet, the only life forms, the most basic single-cell protozoa and me. Relationships oh. would be difficult, but not impossible. I repaired to the pod to appraise the supply situation. The pod had indeed been looted from a seeding ship. Among the supplies, I found two strange devices labeled eco-accelerator rockets. Hmm. I held out little hope that they might improve my lot, but launched them anyway. For six days and nights, the entire planet was racked with storms, the like of which I had never witnessed before or since. Then, just as suddenly, they stopped. In just six days, I had created my own world. Lush That's world. crazy. I had created Rimmer World. I was Adam in my own Eden, and only one thing was missing, my own Jane. Oh my god. As I studied the pod's textbooks, my excitement grew. It seemed entirely possible for me to create a fully grown female clone using my own DNA as a template. This, of course, created the most enormous moral dilemma. Technically, she would be my sister, and therefore unable to take me as her lover. After much mm. soul-searching, I reluctantly decided, what the hell, I just wouldn't tell her. <laughs> what the hell, I just wouldn't tell her. Careful nature, the cocoon cracked. 
Oh my god. Obviously wrong. The clone was just an identical copy of me. I went back to the manuals and tried again. Another copy of himself. Bro, it's gonna be so much versions of Rimmer. It's gonna be insane by the time they get there. There she blows. An S3 planet. Never become blocked. Entering atmosphere. Got something. Try quadrant 49072. According to the scan, there's life signs. Confirmed. Thousands of them. Either Mr. Rimmer had the incredible good fortune to land on a populated planet, or... Or what? It's too hideous to contemplate. Oh my god. Wait. Nasal alert. Oh, are you getting something? I sure am. My nasal hairs are quivering like an opposite's bosom on the high notes. Halt abomination! Rimmer! Silence! Travesty! Rimmer! Never have I seen such a hideously formed and unnaturally freakish deviant. Rimmer! Silence, mutant! How dare you stand there and address a norm using that face? It's a revolting insult against nature. This might sound like a bit of a corny line, but... I can't even bring myself to say it. Say what? Take us to your leader. <laughs> <laughs> Let the Great One judge them. Oh my god. Disturbs our royal snooze. Rimmer, it's us. Dear Lord, what created such foulness? Is this the product of a marriage? Oh, well, world? I guess he did get to create females. He did figure it out. Remember the gerbil? Remember, 600 years ago, we used to be a shipmates. We come to save you. We found them in the woods, your flared nostrilness. <laughs> and have brought them here to be tried as travesties. These deformed monsters are no sight for my concubines. My treasures of pulchritude run along. Avert your eyes from her great beauty. Oh my god. You are kidding me. <clears throat> Let the trial begin before my jacuzzi water grows tepid. <laughs> These three abominations stand charged on eight counts of gross deviancy. Not content with not looking like the true image, they flaunt freakish behavior such as charm, bravery, compassion, and honor. Are there no signs of normalcy in these wretches? No cowardice or pomposity? No snidiness or smarm? Not even basic honest to goodness, double dealing to facedness. Sire, these creatures did not even attempt to sell each other out for their own freedom. They lack even the most basic natural drives. <laughs> uh, sir, we wish to speak to the hologram known as Rimmer. I am he! Not so. We are seeking the creator of your race, the father of your people, the first true Rimmer, the template for your species. Enough of this heresy. At the stroke of dawn, take them out and kill them. And when you've killed them, burn the bodies, then bring me the cold ashes on a silver plate. With a glass of chilled sunset. <laughs> oh my god. Doesn't he know it's red wine with cold ashes? <laughs> there go Rimmer. Try to mattress. 
thousands upon thousands of backstabbing, treacherous, hypocritical, cowardly, oh. slime mongering Jubuses. They overthrew me. And when they found out they couldn't damage my hard line drive, they locked me in here so I could never threaten their insane lust for power. Look, bud, I can understand them locking you up, but what have they got against me, Derek and Titan? Deviates from the template is reviled. The smallest physical flaw in their banished from society. Anyone who displays behavior deemed out of character or unrimmer like is punished by death. Is that why no one on the planet is brave, sexy, noble, or charming? <laughs> All crimes here. Man, I must be oh, One, two, and three. <laughs> but sir, don't they realize the only way any society can evolve is through mutations in the gene pool? When there is no richness or variety, congenital disorders and inherited lunacy are commonplace. Who can forget the famously insane European monarchies of the 19th and 20th centuries? Oh, what have I created? Your very own personal hell. Well, yeah. fun though it's been here about your last 500 years of total misery, shouldn't we be making skedaddle plans? I, for one, could not bear the prospect of being burned alive. Flames and peach? Ooh, I'd rather die. Have <laughs> you tried escaping, Rip? The whole planet is populated with backstabbing slime balls. The minute I got out of me, sold back immediately. Yeah. Way out. There hasn't been a prison built that could hold Derek Kilster. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we scrape away this mortar here, slide one of these bricks out, then use and rope we from strand to this Hessian kind of pulley system? So that when a guard comes in, he says, a tripwire gets laid out, then he put Rimmer in the guard's uniform, he leads us out, we steal some swords, and fight our way back to the book. Or we could use the teleporter. <laughs> <laughs> or at a pinch, we could use the teleporter. <laughs> oh, I've done it again. Oh Two my god. One day, I must have accidentally tapped into the previous calibration. Sorry about this, it's just we're escaping from Rimmer World. Don't we? tell them that. They don't want to know the future. Poor old Rimmer doesn't know he's about to get persecuted for six centuries by a load of his own clones. Careful, bud. For a minute, I thought you were going to let slip that he spends the next 557 years locked in a dungeon. <laughs> so nothing, man. I don't want to spoil the surprise. Rimmer World was weeks ago. We're far oh, more concerned day. at the moment about the quite hideous thing that's happened to Lister. <laughs> Ah, oh, day. That was absolutely great. He slipped into the future instead of the past. Uh, that's all we have. If you enjoyed that, please don't forget to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. See you guys next time.